Hello YouTube world vinyl enthusiasts My name is Jonas, I'm from Sweden and I like records and I'm going to show you my recent vinyl finds The routine is I buy records, I play them or I clean them and I play them and before I file them you can see my collection in the back here I show you the records and talk a little bit about them that's my routine and I love it here we go I'm gonna start off with a book recommendation. I just finished reading this. This is A Love Supreme, the creation of John Coltrane's classic album by Ashley Kahn. I urge everyone uh, who likes jazz to check this out. Obviously you get the, the, all, all the information you need from the recordings of A Love Supreme and, uh, and the record and stuff like that. It's a fantastic book, highly recommended. Uh, what I thought of doing is I'm going to start with jazz records and then I'm going to go to the more progressive or dare I say folk records. But I'm going to start with the jazz. I've listened to this a couple of times because I have a dear friend, uh, Lasse, co-worker and a friend who uh, is also a hi-fi nut and a record collector. He recommended this to me, played it and I was just blown away by the quality of the pressing. So I got a copy, this is from 2014 I think. And the artist's name is Malia. And she's teamed up with Boris Blank, which I think had something to do with yellow. Convergence, let's say it's called Convergence. But this is, it's labeled as Future Jazz and I can agree to that. Her singing is fantastic. His work with the electronics are great. This is reference material right here this sounds as good as anything's gonna sound on your system i promise you okay so 1961 uh, you have gary mulligan at village vanguard uh, <clears throat> stereo press gatefold sleeve verve all that good stuff i actually got this i actually got this in in gothenburg when i was there record hunting and this cost me two euro the music of this is just fantastic so for two euro uh, music wise great sounds great it's just like great all the way through the next one I've had my eye on for many many years I found a copy but it only contained one record back in the day so I didn't buy it uh, <laughs> obviously yeah it's gone up a little bit in price but I'm, I'm glad I, I got a copy now uh, this is Thelonious Monk with Charlie Rouse, John Orr and Frankie Dunlop live in Stockholm 1961. This was released in 1987 on Dragon Records here in Sweden. And this this is a great session that the or live take that they do. Right now I'm obsessed with Monk. I'm reading a book about him and I'm ordering his records like I'm yeah, I'm obsessed. It's not healthy. And that's a great example of his playing 1961. Okay, so if you're out to get high quality sheep heat, this is one of them. I, I should say, or could say. Uh, this is Lars Gullin with strings. So Swedish baritone saxophonist. Uh, <clears throat> this is on Sonnet and it was released in 1980, but it's a, a recording from 1964 on uh, the Modern Museum in Stockholm. It's maybe five euro. Six euro, something like that. It's it's like a it's like a half of a Big Mac for this quality in perfect condition. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Get it, Lars Gullin with strings. Lars Gullin was a fine, fine jazz musician, and we are going to talk more about Lars Gullin in the future. This is a record that costs next to nothing, and it's one of the best songs I've ever heard. Like, it almost brought me to tears when I heard it. And this is, it's, it looks like nothing, but it contains the best you've ever heard. <laughs> this is Oscar Peterson and the bassists, Ray Brown and Niels um, Henning Oysten Peterson, I think he's called Niels Oysten Peterson. Okay, uh, in Montreux 1977. So you have a... <sighs> Pretty like outdated Oscar Peterson uh, from 1977. I mean, he's not the hippest cat in ja the jazz world, is he? We also have um, the 
bass player Niels Pedersen from uh, Denmark, who's obviously made a name for him himself. And you have the song You Look Good To Me that they first released, Oscar Pedersen first released on We Take Requests, I think it is. And that song from that record is fantastic. It's like they could play that on my funeral and I would be super happy. Uh, but what they do on this live take is insane and there's a video online i urge you to stop this and go and watch that right now because oscar peterson plays like a maniac it's it's insane if if you think that oscar peterson is a dull piano player think again watch the video see his fingers fly over the instrument but first Ray Brown solos, and that's a fine solo, a bass solo. It's hard, it's hard to, to, to play a bass solo on, on a, a, a big like stand-up bass. But after his solo, Niels Pearson takes over. And uh, I know Ray Barreto, I think he's called, he's, he does YouTube videos. He has done an analysis of this, uh, and he says that it's the best bass solo ever recorded and I agree like I don't think you can see or hear anything that is better than what he does Neil Peterson from this take and this costs like five euro you can buy this for five euro in five six seven euro in mint condition and you got a live take of the best piano and bass ever recorded it's it's I could spend a video talking just about that song but that's enough moving on Abby is Blue, Abby Lincoln. This is a, a reissue on original, original Jazz Masters. Great sound quality. I think this is a late, late 70s reissue from, a, dare I say, 50s recording. Fantastic record. One of the best vocalists uh, I've heard. And you got a killer lineup on this too. You have Kenny Dorham on trumpet. You have Winton Kelly on piano. You have Sam Jones, Philly Joe Jones, Stanley Turretine, Julian Priester, Max Roach, and Cedar Walton. So different sessions, great. And her voice, it's recorded just right in your face, like right up there in your face. Two Swedish records. This is a radio broadcast something something, uh, so that's, that's why I had a sticker. But now we move into the more folk and, and psych and prog related. Um, this is Growing Grass Flykt Försök, Escape, a Try to Escape. And it's a country folk, folk, country folk record. And not that good. I took a chance on this. It doesn't cost that much. Um, maybe five, six, seven euros, something like that. Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't good. From the same seller, same price, was this. Private pressed Peter Vartin, Vartin and Klaus Nordenskjöld. And this is, this is folk at its finest. And it costs nothing. It's super obscure. Two guys just playing in their living room. It sounds like that. And it's, it's fantastic. Like how could, can I, I've collected records for 15 years. And I've never heard of this record. And it's cheap. And it's awesome. This is why I collect records, to find this stuff in Sweden. I mean, if this was a English or a, a American private press record, I wouldn't be surprised that I haven't heard it, because <laughs> obviously I've ha I haven't heard any everything or read about everything. But in Sweden, like, never stumble upon anyone talking about that record or seeing that record. It's insane. I finally uh, went through and ordered me a copy of this. This is Serge Gainsbourg. Serge, 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 Serge Gainsbourg with History de Melodie Nelson. Exactly like that. That's how you pronounce it. On Light in the Attic. The only bad thing about this record is that it's too short. Other than that, it's a masterpiece. And I have no idea what it's talking about. I read some about its autobiography about or autobiography uh, uh, I, I don't know the word for that he's singing about himself 
and his relation with a 15 year old girl when he was 40 or something like that so maybe it's best not to understand the lyrics but Big Star 1000 has talked about that record since I first started to see his videos way back when so uh, I took a chance on it I'm glad I did and it's amazing that I haven't even heard it until I got it on vinyl but it's, I mean I love that sort of getting the first listen on vinyl it's like buying it when it came out on dandelion records i think this was a recommendation from uh, from uh, christopher here in sweden this is british saint young song from the gentleman on dandelion records great female folk record great it's so damn good and some of her stuff is is really expensive but this one is it's just me median median expensive like okay expensive i don't know a swedish prog or psych record that is super rare not super rare but it's rare um that i've had two copies of i sold them and i got one now for a great price and this time i don't think it's going out of the collection this is Roger Ryggen. half of the songs is fantastic and half of the songs is just they try to do something humorous and it's not my cup of tea really but half of the songs are great singing in swedish i can't stand it it's like that's why i never listen to november because when they open their mouths it's just it ruins for me but the music is fantastic okay moving on this is jade in uh, when was, this was released in in uh, uh, england they were called jane and then they released it in the, in the us 1968 maybe 69 70 and then they were called marion siegel with silver jade for some strange reason i don't know and i actually got a promo copy of this fantastic i don't have many promo copies so that was kind of cool uh, this is not an expensive record but it's really really good if you like that sort of folk it sounds just like this this is how it sounds if you're going to take something with you with this video something on your journey it's this one forget everything i've said forget everything that i'm going to say if you're going to check out one record that i show you it's this i took a chance on this <sighs> And I'm so glad I did. This is a folk record. I think they are from the from Scotland. Uh, called Interlude. I think it was recorded. Yeah, 1979. It is privately pressed. Privately, private pressed record. I don't know if it's it's hand that they did. They have ha hand uh, colored the tree. This is a folk record that just. It kills. There's not a bad second on this record. And when you get to the third song on the A side, it's just like, in my opinion, it's it's phenomenal. Like a phenomenal record. And it's not, it's not expensive. You can buy this for like 12 euro. Cost less than a new record. Cost less than if you buy like. A reissue of uh, I don't know something and it's better than most of your records that you have in your collection insane I interlude 1979 and I think there's clips on YouTube so you can listen to it first but you don't need to you just buy it just buy it uh, one of my favorite singers and I hope uh, I have some CDs with him um, and some later on vinyl but unfortunately i'm still looking for the four first records of him uh, i managed to find a u.s press of this scott walker's aloner on smash records fidelity wise not a good sounding record unfortunately and it deserves to sound fantastic because this is a masterpiece like there's not a bad second of this this is a masterpiece so if you haven't heard Scott Walker, Walker Brothers, um, and what he, the stuff he did uh, later on in the 2000s with Sano, and it's just, it's a completely new level of, of artistry, isn't it? Scott Walker, one of the best. And talking about one of the best <laughs> 
finally, finally found a copy of this Nico Marble Index, one that I, uh, the, the last one, like the, the last Nico record that I really, really was looking for a nice looking cover, isn't I think if I'm going to rank the records that she released, I still think that the Serda songs are the best record that she uh, produced uh, alongside uh, John Cale. And then Chelsea Girl. I think this is this. I, I think this comes last because it's so avant-garde and experimental and just out there that it's almost hard to listen to. But then again, her voice just comes in and the instruments. Uh, it's. I could die, listening to her voice. It's just so damn good. It's comforting, isn't it? And I saw the documentary on uh, uh, Apple TV about Velvet Underground and uh, I wasn't that impressed of the documentary I thought it was and I understand what they did but yeah fuck it when Nico entered the scene I mean come on shit so good looking so much talent died too soon finally last but not least uh, long time want like a long 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 time want uh, i looked at this when i started collecting for real like 10 years ago or something like that um but it, it was always too pricey and back then maybe it cost five euro 50 euro or something like that nowadays it's a little more expensive um than 50 euro but i managed to to uh, trade this and what this is is Fruit Tree by Nick Drake. You get a lovely, lovely uh, sort of booklet. And then you get the records. <clears throat> and the funny or unfunny thing with this is it's not released on uh, Island Records, which it used to be, or it is nowadays also. <laughs> but it's released on Hannibal uh, 1980 think 89 no 86 sorry 86 and um, the you have the original artwork but you get it in some sort of like inner sleeve so what I did was I, I put the record in a you know in a, in a rice paper sleeve and uh, in thick cardboard so I still have all the records uh, from the box set individually sort of wrapped <laughs> so you get five leaves left and um, pink moon Right later, and a fourth, um, a fourth record with outtakes, ten previously unreleased tracks, including seven completely new songs plus the four last session tracks, called "Time of No Reply." That was, I think, this was issued for this box uh, when it came out. I sold all my other Nick Drake records. I had. A bootleg of Pink Moon. No, not Pink Moon. I, I uh, uh, no, I had a bootleg with Bride Later. I had a box reissue box with Pink Moon, and I had a 1975 reissue of uh, Five Leaves Left. And I sold them all because this is all I need, sound quality wise. This um, blows everything, like hits everything out of the park. This is so much better than anything else uh, of the pressings I've ever heard. Even the box, the new box set and, and the 75 reissue. I haven't heard an original first press, would love to do that. But this is better than all those. 1986, I don't know if it's, it's um, analog. Uh, a mastered analog or if it's even from the original tapes or a good tape I have no idea I don't know but it sounds terrific so I'm super happy that I have that and when I did my research and there's a bunch of different fruit tree bro boxes but um, when I read about it they say that the Hannibal th this one uh, is the best sounding one of, of them and it sounds fantastic, big stage like, and and with the orchestration, big stage, and it's so personally personal when when he sings and plays his guitar, it's just right up there. 
it's like you're sitting next to to him uh, if you have a good uh, good uh, sound system so that's it i hope you enjoyed that please subscribe if you haven't and leave me comments i love the comments i'll answer every single comment um, so if you have any questions or something like that just just write it down below and i'll talk to you in my next video so have a great day everyone